Hey YouTubers, this is Shelly from The No Madness Life. I wanted to show you something we've done in our 1996 Fleetwood Flare. Um, and this isn't it. <laughs> Actually, this is part of it. Uh, I removed uh, the chair that was here and put in just a nice little table with a lamp because I want it to feel like a living room, not like an RV. Um, but this is actually what I want to show you. This is where my dinette used to be. And what we did was we removed this bench that was here and came all the way out to our couch. We had to leave this box that the bench seat was on. Um, the lower part is what was left um, because underneath is our inverter and our fuse box and that's kind of where our heat comes out also as an exhaust in there for the heat um, for our furnace. So we had to leave that so we had to come up with some kind of idea of what to do. So we took some pieces from the other box and built a little partial wall and I wanted something that would make my kitchen bigger. So I'm only showing you this part right now because it's kind of a mess in here. I'm getting ready to um, hit the road. We're hitting the road in about three weeks and we've been working diligently on this. We put in all new flooring, we've been painting. Um, I will show you um, what I, some of the things I put a lot of energy into, which the entire coach was this brown wood back there. And um, I've changed a lot in here just so it'll feel like a home when we're um, traveling. Um, hi, Mr. Tiggs. That's my sweet boy right there. Um, so what I did was um, we had thought about doing an L-shaped couch, but when we kind of figured out the height by the window and then the mirror that's there that I like, actually I like keeping that there. I didn't want to take it off. The height of the back of the couch was not going to be tall enough. It would be only a one person, basically like a chase. And I said, well, that's kind of worthless. Like it's one person sits there. It's not, I'm not utilizing it for anything else but a couch. So um, then we went to Menards and we started looking around and I said, gosh, you know, what if we built an L-shaped bar so that one part of it would be this part would be where we could sit and eat, look out the window. Um, we could work on our laptop, set up our office if we wanted, um, put everything away when it's time to eat. Then this part, I could have my appliances out. Um, we put in this plug, because the plug in these for some reason is way down low. So we put in this plug so that we could have the USB and have option of four, even though I wouldn't run four appliances at once, um, I have the option of just bringing one forward, plugging it in, using it, and then putting it away. So, and then I um, wanted to be able to like prepare food. I have no space over here. This is pretty much it. I just cleaned out the fridge, so those are the containers drying out. Um, so you have no workspace over there. Everybody knows that. You got your stove and no counter. So. Um, when we got to Menards, we were looking at woods. My, my husband was looking at some pine. I'm like, no, I don't want it to look like a workbench. I want it to look like an island or a counter, something cool. So we found, they actually had it in, a bo in boxes and they were clearancing it out. It was like 16 by five or six foot um, birch. And of course it was unfinished, but uh, it was in the butcher block cut and so I said oh this is it this is what I want it looks really thick but it's not and it's really lightweight which is really important in an RV you when you take out something you want to put in either the same weight or less weight because everything you do is based on weight in a class A vehicle so you know you don't go with granite you go with granite look-alikes you go with tile look-alikes um, so we brought it home and my husband cut the shape we needed for this corner and for the length. And then um, I went and bought some, I think it was, I think it was by Minwax. It's a uh, oil based stain and it was the chestnut, which, cause I wanted that 14 karat gold kind of look like, I wanted a really strong, beautiful color. 
So, as you can see the mirror image, it's insane. Um, that's because I watched about four hours of how to pour um, the high gloss bar top epoxy. I knew I wanted something waterproof and I wanted something easy to clean um, that would never stain and would last probably the life of this vehicle. So I bought the kit and after hours and hours of YouTube I built up my confidence <laughs> and I followed the kit and I'll tell you if you follow the kit and you do exactly what it says this stuff is amazing and it's not even scary to work with I watched a YouTube video of Pippi Peterson doing her kitchen table and I said oh my gosh I can do this so I got the kit and I mixed the equal parts and I did the six minutes of stirring and then when I felt I had stirred it enough I stirred it three more minutes because they said when you think you've stirred it enough stir it some more and then um, we made sure the bar was all level. Every corner of this was level because this is a self-leveling um, product and it's supposed to run off the ends and it will just all run together and create an amazing shine. And I did achieve it all. <laughs> I poured it on there. I did the S shape. I didn't have the guts to pour it line by line. Um, like another woman I saw did it. I actually poured it in the S shape and moved it around with the sponge brush and it worked really well. And then I took my, um, I had to go buy one of them heat guns and you just wave it over it um, on low, um, softly and it pops the bubbles. And as long as you just push the product really softly, you won't get those deep, deep bubbles that you can't get out. You'd literally have to drill it out and refill it. So that's what scared me the most. And um, I think it came out gorgeous and I'm so happy with it. And I think it just looks like it belongs in here. I mean, it just flows with the decor. Um, uh, so then I said to my husband, well, 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 let's go get another piece and we'll do that countertop. Well, of course they didn't have any left when we went back. And so we're just gonna, we'll go back and see if they have any cause it would fit there perfect and we could take the sink and everything out do it and put it in and it would match and look gorgeous but for now this is my showpiece um, and then what my husband did was he built up the bottom of this bar for a cabinet so over here he built a, a cabinet door I wanted one on the end so that if I'm in the kitchen cooking let me move around uh, if I'm in the kitchen cooking I can just reach down into this cabinet and get my pots and pans and that was the other thing we needed to solve. I needed to put my pots and pans somewhere. They were taking up my pantry. Um, and then it was really dark and deep in there. So I put in a battery operated light switch. And now you can see all the way back there. And I'm going to fill that with all my, I have air fryers, electric skillets, and anybody that lives in an RV, they need all their, their um, appliances because you can't these ovens I wouldn't even bake cookies in this oven so I bring my air fryer and if I want cookies I'll just go buy them um, because it's just too much work and, and it's a small oven and I don't have the convection microwave but I will be looking into that when mine decides to not work anymore but for now I don't I don't really care um, so I got these chairs, I wanted bar stools, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, how am I gonna find, I, I thought I was gonna have to go with a saddle seat. But I went on Amazon, and I just kept scrolling and scrolling, and I finally found these. They're super lightweight, I can move them around with one hand, easy. They're very attractive, they're hydraulic, and they're at their lowest setting right now, but they go from 20 inches all the way up to 26, I believe. Um, I need them at the lowest setting for this bar, but they got a little back on them, so they're a little cozy. They're, you can tell they're very lightweight, so not something I recommend for you to buy for home. They're basically for an RV and whatever else somebody, I mean, they're very lightweight. I would not use them at home at my um, island. So they're cute. They tuck in. We're going to bungee them in, um, maybe even do a... Uh, strap across them and do a hook over here so that they stay pressed right up to the bar while we travel um, 
other than that, I do have some other renovations that I am doing this week, and I'm hoping you'll like and subscribe so you can see me tackle this. This is my nightmare. This is that right there is Bondo. We had a big hole cracked in it, and uh, my dad had put silicone over it, but it was starting to get really thin, and so my husband decided to put a fiberglass patch behind the wall, and then he bondoed it in. Um, so now it's super smooth, ready to be resurfaced. Um, there's a lot of hard water stains and lime. I mean, this is cleaned, like a normal cleaning, but I have to do some hideous, look at this. <laughs> That's like iron, lime, 21 years of whatever. Um, it does have a little bit of um, comet on it. That's why you're seeing the filmy stuff. But um, this is what it looks like right now. It's still got some of the sheen on the walls, but the tub has none left. So that's, this is gonna be a crazy video because this is gonna be the first time I've ever done anything like this and I'm feeling gutsy. I went and bought the Homax tile and tub resurfacing kit and I kept searching for videos on YouTube. I seen a bunch of them for Bathworks and I wanted the Bathworks, but the Bathworks I had to order and it, uh, and it was $50 more and I'm like, I'm just doing an RV. I'm not doing my house. So I thought, I'm going to go with the Homax and then I'm going to make a video about the Homax because I researched YouTube and they only had the professionals making it. They literally did not have somebody doing it from prepping to actually painting and then seeing the end result. And that's what I like to see because I want to see step by step how they did it. So I am going to make a video step by step. Um, I considered doing the sink too, but I may prep it because I want it white. It's clean, it's spotless, it's a nice sink. But I really want it white. Um, so stay tuned for that video. That ought to be a humdinger. <laughs> I'm already, I'm like already stressed over it because I can't even imagine what I'm going to go through. And I know it's going to be a process. And I did the roll on. I'm not doing the spray because it's a small space and I think the spray would just make a big mess. Um, so I want you to stay tuned for that one. And then I will be doing a full RV reno uh, walk through right before we leave when everything is done and that way You can see what we've done and get some ideas for yourself And I look forward to your comments and I hope that you like and subscribe so you can follow our journey and um, See all the fun things we're gonna do. All right. Talk to you later